It's Open House Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Mariam Longe. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Good, good, good. good. <laughs> so, I've not been feeling well. I know it's just the beginning of the year and we've only started work, but I'm, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to Friday. I need to rest. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's like malaria or whatever. Yesterday, before I got to work, I was so ill. My sister said she was watching to just make sure that I don't faint or something oh. else, you know. But, yeah, I, I don't know why. But I'll, I'll go to the hospital and, um, you know, check it out. I thought that with last week. I think sleep is just what you need. I need two days to rest and I'm feeling refreshed. I only have these guilt. My kids now have to live as early as I do. Mm. So we're going out of the house together. And I've always fought it at the school to make sure that they get enough sleep and pick them up. But... The small one is six years old, so I think they are ready mm. for mm. the realities of life. I've left them this time. Lagos children. Lagos children. Fully kitted up this morning, and we're going to get out there. I'm going to walk these kids. Imagine. And it's really, and my, my, kid, my, my daughter, well, the, she had assignments, so she's still pretty late. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, where she is, she's at a tutorial where they give them a lot of assignments. <clears throat> she didn't sleep all night. So, she sets her alarm to 3 a.m. so that she can wake up and complete it. What? Unfortunately, 10 year old, help me. Wow. So, 5, 5, 5 o'clock, 5.30, she comes to my room and Mommy, I'm sorry, my alarm sounded, but I slept off. I'm not finished my homework. Please, can I not go? I said, me, yeah, I don't even want you to go at all, but, you know, you have to go and talk to your dad. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it's, it's so much, we put so much burden on this kid. Mm. They're just children. She has you know? to go and then explain. 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 Yeah. So that's life. Yeah. Sometimes things will happen, you should be able to face it. Yeah. yeah we so. don't understand. This. It does not matter. It's for her own um, experience. Yeah. 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 yeah, I will not go. Those days, we do <laughs> all sorts of things. We threw our books away and said it was missing. We did all sorts of Let's things. not encourage it because mm -hmm. um, there was one time in my children's school, they were complaining about parents that would bring their children during exams and have them study in the car until it's time for exams before they let them into the school. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's not encourage mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. yeah. But you know those days in our times, they beat. But this one, they will beat. That's uh, why she's, so she's scared oh, okay. of the beating. Yeah, yeah. So that's if why she's... If they were going to beat her, me, I would let her stay home. Yeah, that's, 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 that, that, that would have been my decision. But. I had one terrible experience in secondary school. I came in, I had two assignments, I couldn't finish up. Then a friend taught me, okay, let's just pick up somebody else's book and copy it. And while we're copying, the teacher came in and he saw me. My teacher, Mr. Father, was in. I remember the way he looked at me. I said, you? Of you? Mm -hmm. You? And the beating started from him. They beat me till closing for everything I did not finish. Mm -hmm. I was just about 14 years. The beating was just yeah, too much. Yeah, that was back then. So, so when, when, when we review these beatings, I don't think they're actually really, really mm. helpful. I mean, mm. sometimes, yes, punishment, but those even, beats sometimes... Because the beating does not put why. into... Oh, that good. That's what the, the beating does not acknowledge mm. the reason why. Mm -hmm. Because if you came, home, came to school without your homework, because maybe something happened yeah. at home, an emergency, and the one and the person that was just lazy that didn't do their homework, you're, you're treated the same way. We shouldn't be. That's one thing about beating. If you sat and had a conversation with them, you would know what to help. actually helped studied all night. Them. I mean, I saw her studying, you know, and then she said, I'll come again. I'm like, she's 10 years old. They'll you're defending How does she even know to set up a house? I'm saying, like, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, let's go and Too break. much. <laughs> that is too life. much. Is that child abuse? I think it's child abuse. <laughs> It's going to break when we come back. We go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Let's start with the nation. 
Northwest, Southwest top 93.5 million likely voters. Boko Haram, a plot to destroy Nigeria, says Buhari. <clears throat> Bandits kill community leader, nephew, abduct four housewives in Kaduna. APC PCC challenges article on alleged corruption and equity indebted to Tinumbu, says Governor Oyebanji. 13 Edo train passengers still with kidnappers. And then picture story here. Southeast to become the industrial hub, says Tinumbu. Okay, which story are we starting with? Major headline. Major headline. So, IEC <clears throat> has released all, um, the list of all voters registered uh, for the next elections, and we're up to 93.4 million Nigerians registered to vote. And um, they've done the geographical numbers, which, of course, the politicians and the parties would need. Um, the Northwest is leading with 22.25 uh, million voters. The Southwest is following with 17.9 million. North Central is third with 15.3 million, and the South South has 14.4 million. Mm. North East also um, 12.5 million. So these numbers, of course, inform where campaigns will be strongest and all of that. And I hope that you know the figures are just will just guide. Yeah. Will not be, will make those areas uh, porous to you know crisis and all of that. But this is good news. Yeah. So um, the Edo State Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, Chris Neikare, has insisted that there were 20 passengers and not 32 passengers that were abducted. Um, he said that uh, so far seven of them have been rescued, while 13 are still in captivity. And he's also saying that um, the security agencies are working in collaboration with vigilante groups, um, hunters, and um, he's very confident that the rest of them would regain their freedom. He also said that they had re received information, you know, from intelligence that had helped them. And he said that the government's policy of see something, say something is very important and is working very well. The identities of our informants are safe. That's, you know, giving advice to those who see something and say something. And it says, any landlord who allows his or her facility to be used to keep or murder victims will be, access will be an accessory to murder and will be charged to court. The rule has worked, you know, they talked about another incident that happened. And um, for me, th th this sounds like they may have gotten information um, from people who may have seen maybe victims of any crime or maybe particularly this crime for them to have been able to rescue the seven. I'm hoping we'll hear more on that. Um, so it's important that we say something, really. Intelligence cannot be gotten just by police officers. Right. Citizens have to participate. Absolutely. So, as you know, it's political season, campaign season. Everybody's using everything they have to, against each other and, uh, and their, and their op opponents. So there's one here. Um, the, if, if you recall, the PDP had released a, put, a, put out a press release concerning Ashwaju's uh, health fitness. And then um, the PCC of the APC have also responded, um, saying that also Atiku is very, he's not he's, um, going to make for a medical checkup back in Germany last year. And also, they also reflect on the fact that he has the allegations of corruption against him. They were referring to the whistleblower Michael Achimogu, who had recorded a tape where Atiku was admitting, allegedly admitting, that um, the special purpose vehicles were used throughout his tenure as vice president to fund his private businesses and family activities and that was that that conversation was caught on tape and that audio was released and they're saying that if if indeed this happened that he should have actually stepped down from the race because he, uh, corruption is obviously all over and um he needs to uh, admit where he's wrong and as i said it's a thick of political season everything you've got is the time for you to use it against each other because we're trying to win as sway as many votes as possible and this is political season for that Okay, let's move on quickly now to the punch. Very quickly, INEC final list. Northwest, Southwest, top 93 million voter registers. The president and the vigorous gut fly. Jaylee, my husband's killer, will caution drunk drivers, says widow of Slain Baker. CCTV exposes Ogun Hotel murder suspect. Marketers project six-month fuel scarcity. PDP six alliance with 11 parties. UK shot obese company over account issues says report and INEC can't be trusted for credible polls says Shoure. Okay, which story are we taking? Major UK, okay. Okay. UK um, has dissolved, dissolved Peter Obi's company um, Next International. This was a report that was um, given by Premium Times and they reported that for failing to submit its annual accounts 
authorities in the United Kingdom have struck off Next International UK Limited, a company largely owned by presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi. They said that it was struck off after, you know, he, he, they had gotten the compulsory first warning and second notice. So this is, happens after you haven't responded to any of the notices. Um, and um, records say they show that the company was registered as a business agent involved the sale of a variety of goods in England and in Wales. The firm reported that the um, the firm reported taking a mortgage from Lloyd's TSB Bank PLC for a property in Croydon, uh, May 16, 2008, 14 months after assuming duties as governor of Anambra State, will be resigned as the director of Next International. He was director while his wife served as secretary. Um, they said that he had not at the time where he. Um, was governor, he had not declared it as one of his assets, but he said he was unaware that the law expected him to declare assets or companies he jointly owned with family members or anyone else. Uh, I, I read that story that, you know, notices were given, even mm. if you were unaware, once the first notice, the law requires that the um, company's co um, office in England send notices, mm. which they did. Each notice was enough awareness, except you just refused to to file the necessary document. Marketers um, project that, you know, the first scarcity would continue for another six months. According to the national uh, PRO of, the, of IPMAN, Chief Ukadi Kechinedu, he said that fuel imports and subsidy were making Nigerians suffer. He said the issue of subsidy and the importation of petroleum products are the major reasons why we are suffering like this and having an epileptic supply of uh, petrol. I said this might drag to this administration leaves office because, you know, they've budgeted for another six months of subsidy. But according to the finance minister, she, uh, they budgeted $3.6 trillion to pay for so, so, uh, foil subsidy till June 2023. And the minister for um, states for petrol, for petroleum uh, resources, that's where Chief Timmy Pre Silva, he said that the NAPC is presently runs, running at a loss because of his mandate with the federal government as regards foil subsidy. So whatever they sell, they even have to pay for, for you know what they did to profit at, mm. and you know this this just goes to show that everybody is talking about the removal of subsidy. I'm happy that all the presidential candidates have said they will remove um, for subsidy, so we are good. Okay, <coughs> I was really concerned about the CCTV. Okay, um, story, I, I think it's yes, guy called Shegun. Yes, yeah, so this um, a lifeless body of a man known as Shegun was found in a hotel in um, in Ogun State. They said that he had come in on January. He had come in, I think it was like Saturday, January 7th, with, he had another person with him, a male suspect. They checked into the room. The next day when the hotel staff went to the room to clean the place up, they found him, you know, lifeless in bed. Um, CCTV cameras show him coming in with this other person. And they said the victim already had a wound on his face. Mm. They, in fact, also had a swollen eye that he had been at a party. Um, reports are saying that he had been at a party and he was attacked by hoodlums. And so it looked like he had come to the hotel for refuge. But by morning, when they found his lifeless body, the suspect had taken his phone with him. The police still found 250 on his person, so it looked like the suspect was not interested in his money. So I think police investigation, will, it's still going on to find out who that suspect is. His images can be seen on the CCTV, but he's yet to be identified properly. Oh, okay. And the family is asking for justice. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something 
We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, and Ikula Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Huh. Hmm. Thanks for staying with us. Moving on now to Daily Sun. INEC makes U turn on election shift. Boko Haram ploy to destroy Nigeria, says Buhari. Labour Party to INEC make poly unit PVC collection points. Importation in Nigeria drops by 40%. I'll make Southeast Industrial Hub, says Tinumbu. An Edo train attack, 20 persons abducted. Let me start with the Boko Haram story. So, President Momo Dubari was receiving um, Catholic bishops yesterday at the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria at the State House. And there he was telling them categorically that. The Northeast has become safer from Boko Haram. So that they had shifted, uh, according to him, they had, they've improved over the years, particularly in the Northeast, where the focus had shifted to rebuilding infrastructure and orientation on education of the people. He said that he's also very grateful for their visit and that he just returned from Adamawa State and Yobi and he spoke to the people and the officials there where they were able to say that things are much better than it was back in 2015. He also added that he will focus on the economy and ensure that um, we, we see a, a visible turnaround in the economy before he leaves office May 29th. Um, there was something also really important that he said that, um, some, there was something I wanted to get. Uh, he said that but the reason why we are continuing to take loans is because the, the, many of these international bodies see us as credible and are able to pay back these loans. So we have the ability to take loan and pay back and because of that we are also our creditors are able to give us these loans but if we're not if we're not, if we're not able to pay back there's no way these people will give us loans that we should be rest assured that our country will not be just indebted but we have the ability to continually pay back these loans okay, okay so the cbn has released the reports of what we have spent totally on the importation of petroleum products in just 10 months january to october 2022 they said that a total of 12.44 billion is what we have expended and they did a breakdown of how we spent during uh, throughout the months from 1.1 billion in january to you know to about um 1.424 billion in october the total amount amounted to 12.4 billion analysts were in this report also analyzing the cost of it and blaming nigeria's uh, lack of um, working refineries that all our four refineries are not working and of course we must spend this money and um, it's just painful reading it and then tagging it to the issues happening in russia now we can't tap into that because of lack of infrastructure okay um so but based on the story that i think was it about that's okay that mm. in the next by 2024 they said our refineries the product quarter will function 60,000 uh, barrels per day hopefully dangote will resume and then they will approve modular refineries so hopefully in the next few years 
We should have. No, they should did not do it in eight years. Yeah, well, we can still, we can use the. They, they mm. could have, they should have, they didn't. Or we want to look okay. for. Choose one. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Administration mm -hmm. is getting some praise and some criticism here by um, stakeholders. With they say that um, importation drops by forty percent as importers abandon Nigerian ports for neighboring countries. Um, Daily Sante spoke to um, stakeholders. One person was mentioned in particular, the acting president of the Association of Nigerian Licensed Customs Agent. He says that um, ordinarily, uh, we thought that a level of growth and development would have been more than this in the industry. But um, they keep crawling. He says 2022 was not a good year for them because on a monthly basis from February, our volume of imports continued to drop. Mm. And don't forget, we have challenges with the Naira, the rule of CBN not being consistent. He accuses CBN of always, uh, that is always an interloper and involving itself in something that is not even its responsibility. Accused the ministry, ministry of Finance as being docile, not really doing anything. And above all, we have two powerful customs administration that nobody can control. And that's why 40% of them, 40% is dropping in the area of importation and our importation continues to decline. He says, meanwhile, what he would say has worked for the nation is that exportation is increasing and he says that if he in his own opinion one thing he said this administration has done well is in exportation because they have seen an increase geometrically uh, geometrically in the um, exportation mm -hmm. but the importation is still a problem okay moving on to vanguard polls 93.47 million voters to participate says INEC. Tinimbu article trade words over health and credibility status. As I said, it's, it's political season. Train attack 20, not 31 people kidnapped, says Edo government. Tension in Undo as soldiers allegedly attack PDP members. And brain drain. Nigeria loses over 1,800 doctors and healthcare workers December 2022, says NME. All right, which story? Which one do you have? The polls. Okay, let me take the um, tension in Ondo. So the PDP in Ondo yesterday raised alarm over attack of its members in Indore, a local government area of the state by some alleged soldiers. They accused lawmakers representing Indore, Ife Dore, Federal Constituency Minister Tajudin Adefi Soye of masterminding the attack on its members and destroying shops and um, uh, where members were holding their meetings. Um, they fingered the House of Reps member and investigations are ongoing. The House of Reps member, Honorable Adefi Soya, has come out to say, I did not have any hand in any soldier attacking anyone in Dori. And he has um, said that they also destroyed his cars and windscreen of his cars by bullets and that he did not um, send such. The police have arrested some perpetrators and they're investigating the allegations. Okay, we're still on this brain drain matter. So, the chairman NMA Lagos branch, Dr. Benjamin Oluo Jabutu, was said that the government must do something to stop and reduce the brain drain, revealing that about 1,800 healthcare workers left Nigeria 2022, December 2022. He made this known during the stakeholders' engagement with political party and the candidates in Lagos State yesterday. And he warned that medicine as a profession might go into extinction in the country mm -hmm. if this problem persists. Um, he was also saying that there's a very big challenge about brain drain. I've said it several times that we have to be very deliberate and we have to find a way to tackle this head on. Um, according to him, the push and pull syndrome that is affecting Lagos living state, um, the Lagos doctors living is something we must attack. And I think we've been talking about this brain drain for a while. And I know that there are strategies in place to retain doctors I've always said it, we need more strategies to pull them back in. And I think that's what we need to focus on. Mm. Any other story? Let's move on now to Tribune. the Nigerian Tribune. INEC elections will hold. Lagos stops list of 93.4 million registered voters. Police arrest pastor for kidnapping himself. Really? Hmm. APC PDP continue altercations over Tinubu and articles health corruption allegations. Um, Edo train kidnapped 20, not 32, abducted 13, still in captivity, says government. Concerns amount over collapsing infrastructure in Tinkan ports. Buhari meets Catholic bishops, allay fears on Nigeria's indebtedness. 
and Supreme Court dismisses Timmy Lawal's interlocutory appeal on Ogun PDP governorship ticket. Which story? Yeah, so I have the weirdest story of all times. So in Plateau State, the police command has arrested a pastor, Alberka Beatrice, for allegedly organizing his abductions and collecting 600,000 from members of his congregation. He staged this abduction twice, November 14th and November 30th. He first released, his congregation put together 400,000 for his release the first time, and then they put together another 200,000. Anyway, suspicions about Aww. his activity brought, you know, about the investigation. And he confessed Aww. that he and his gang did this. I cannot believe it. They're not givers in his church. So he should so be he a must thief. Them by first. <laughs> he, also, he also confessed to burning some vehicles within the premises of the church because some of them were his haters. Oh, I don't think that man imagine? is well. He's yeah, not well he, he's, this one was he, not called. He's he's he was not called. So I want to take the pot story. So um, according to the Tribune, concerns are mounting over the co collapsing the port infrastructure at Tinkham Ports. And in the report, the entire report, they said that all the witnesses decided to be, uh, didn't want their names uh, printed in the story. But they said that, you know, um, the uh, complainants are saying it's going to almost a year since the photos of collapsing infrastructure at some part of the terminals in Tinkham Ports surfaced online. And that the federal government, through the MPA, assured of repairs that will happen. And when the Minister for Transportation, um, Honorable Bemisola Saraki, visited last year, there were assurances also that the repairs will happen. That people turned up, operators within the port showed up giving suggestions as regards how to go about repairs and how to structure continued business so that this does not affect business, which was one of the concerns that they had. But the moment she left, the MP also left and that infrastructure continued to be dilapidating. They talked about um, perimeter fencing within the port. Um, some of the quays, uh, aprons and tin campus are giving way. The, um, um, I'm trying to get the name of this square, say something that I don't understand. <laughs> they said they need to fix the berth and perimeter fencing within the port. Berth is what I was trying to remember. And this are important infrastructure for continued business there. Maybe we are waiting to we need to shut down the entire mm. airport for one year or two years so that maybe that one will not give us productivity before okay. we fix it. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, bring in our guest for the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right and long standing member of the multiple award winning all female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anifula Pokuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger! Yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yeah, today, yeah, ginger, yeah, ginger, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know, I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah! Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, said 75. But that house wasn't even burnt in 75. Damn. So, will I drink out? Eh? You go drink out. Take, take, take. Make I go make I help you. Rush and rush and rush and. No, be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Light in, you know. Nepa, Nepa Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepa oh. Road. Nepa Road. In a <laughs> uh -uh. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah eh omi omo fella omi omo anikula pokuti. Oh no, baby, can you kick it? It's my audio song, it's not my audio song. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs>
<clears throat> you wouldn't want to work with who? No disrespect. There's no judgment. No, uh, and I respect, oh, they'll judge you, I respect but we won't this judge certain you. type of people. But what I dislike so much is when they, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their resentment on them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. Mom, just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month, and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. But when it comes to like divorced people, I cannot work with a divorcee. I can't see myself doing that. If I find out, if you can hide this one, but if I find out, why they are nice divorcees? I would just. What be, if they are nice? Okay, now it depends. If you are nice, cool. But if you are the type that you don't know how to keep your anger to yourself. You always you always pour it on somebody. Well, I'll not drop my resignation letter. No matter the amount you're paying me. So you're <laughs> more passive aggressive people. Yeah, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and I cannot work with stingy people. <laughs> ah, see this one. Because you cannot be passing me in the morning afternoon. I can say, oh, ah, yeah, I'm working. Oh, yeah, take hundred naira. It's take ten k. Take fifteen k. No, no, you don't have to be my sugar actually. daddy or sugar mommy. What, what, see, the way you treat others is the way they will treat you outside. Yeah. And if you cannot treat your workers well, they are not a good boss. If you cannot be dashing me small, small thing or giving me donuts when I'm when I'm working, you are not a good boss. <laughs>
It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you, thank you. Now my question. Which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. <laughs> Say you didn't want me. me. You're me now. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. <laughs> I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym means. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know. <laughs> Hmm. You know, it's, out there. it's supposed to be. Yeah. I just said, let me take and give you this one as a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink! Oh, I'm not there, I'm not there! <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there! You did not, you, you did not say final answer. Final answer. You, did not, you did not ask me if that was my final you answer. You don't have any choice again. It's only how many, how many cameras do they have? My friend, drink. I gave you a very easy something. Nikon now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, multiple award winning actor, producer, ambassador of Edo people. We have Etinosa Idemudia in the building! <laughs> Don't be fair to go police station, they win the case. Is so she? you don't, you are showing no, your face. No, I don't see that as my second question. You are feeling like a, a contact the prancing peacock. I'm about to cut your wings. Hello? Now, in the amalgamation of 1914, who was the woman who that. said, who drew the line of the amalgamation? Is they, who, who, cuts, who cuts the report? Who is the person? Are you serious? What is name? That woman. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> ah, ah. Yeah, you have done me dirty. I've marked your face. I've marked your face. If anything happened to me today, I don't, I don't if I don't reach my house. Anyway, I'm going to be shuffled, so. Mm. You remember now, Avi? Eh? <laughs> yeah, but you never too thin. Um, now you remember. Hey. If a person who indulges habitually in watching a sexual material is called a voyeur. That's what I'm called. <laughs> you clearly say you don't go even get the yeah. next one. Hey, hey, a voyeur. A voyeur. Then go on. What is a person who makes one? A called? voyeur. <laughs> a voyage. <laughs> a bon voyage. Questions if I, and if it's something that I saw coming, I may not even ask questions. Mm. I may just, you, I may even tell you I saw this. What, if, what if it's in person, mm -hmm. but then would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, You poop can't just be on third me language <laughs> <laughs> on a bike, <laughs> <laughs> and the person say, Babe, I can't. Thanks for staying with us. Joining us on the show this morning is the Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN. He will be speaking on Nigerian roads, housing, and the upcoming elections. Welcome to the show, sir. Good to have you. Happy New Year. Happy it's New a Year. Pleasure to be here. See so, we have a good. lot to talk to you about. In fact, <laughs> the cooler is this high. Yeah. So, I'm starting quickly. I'm going to go straight right into it. The first, obviously, is um, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, which Nigerians have been very concerned. The fact that it's protracted um, issues of the perennial um, 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 traffic. Mm -hmm. And then the holidays came. You were, you were gracious enough to remove the, uh, the, the blockages, the barriers. But unfortunately, they're back. And now people are coming home and they're feeling like this traffic has all started over again. Could you give us an idea? 
on when, how long it's going to take for this road to complete. Because we're told December 2022, mm -hmm. they begged us now that ah, we have to wait to Q1. Q1 is a bit relative or is a bit vague. Can, can we have a date that that Lagos Ibadan Express will be completed? And what caused the delay in the first place? Major source of delay, and let me start again by um, expressing my appreciation to commuters who use that road, uh, a major transport artery for Nigeria, and for their forbearance thus far, and uh, for their understanding as well. But this road could have been built between 1999 and 2015. It wasn't built. So, and from 2015, when this government took over, undoubtedly and undebatably, it is making clearly much uh, progress. It's a better road than we inherited, and it is now at the last mile of completion. Main source of delay first is funding. Uh, you remember at one time when the road was removed from the budget completely, and I was engaging the National Assembly until the president then inaugurated the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, which was essentially investing uh, investment incomes from the Nigerian uh, liquefied natural gas, and also funds recovered uh, from outside Nigeria. Uh, and so when people talk about corruption and anti-corruption, whatever, a president who goes to recover stolen funds and put it in investment for his people, is the real anti-corruption as far as I'm concerned. You're seeing what, the, what is being done with the money. But more importantly is to uh, explain why the barriers are there. We are building through a major transport artery. Our last traffic count indicates that at least 40,000 vehicles use that road from the uh, Lagos end to the Shagamo end. After Shagamo, the traffic drops to about 22,000, 23,000. So that has to be managed to ensure the safety of the construction workers. And that is why you have barriers and diversions. Uh, and uh, you will agree with me that the Lagos end coming into Ojota is the most built up part of the road. Very densely populated residences have sprung up businesses, factories. So we left that part for the last. Now, why did we close? Traditionally, in December, people may not be aware, the construction industry shuts down by mid-December and resumes around the middle of January. So we thought, then thought, okay, that was a good time also. Since we're not building during that period, just doing maintenance and limited maintenance, open up the barriers so that they can move. That really is the long and short of it. Now, when will it finish? Uh, Touchwood, we're expecting, as you said, to finish it in, in the uh, first quarter. But trust me, uh, perhaps we don't pay attention to it. It is in that same gridlock when people either are impatient sometimes, when they drive against oncoming traffic, uh, disobey the diversions and signs. It is in that same gridlock that our construction material moves. So most of the construction materials we use comes from Ogun State. So... These are things when we lose a day, we try to recover. If we lose a week, we try to recover. So Sorry, these so are as, moving targets. As a follow-up, I know the latest article, yes. but as a follow-up, the issue is not your construction. Our problem is not your construction. Our problem is the inability of those officers there to control traffic properly or the, the, your relationship with either Julius Berger or whoever it is there. Is, so construction will always go on. But how do you ensure, as a minister, that there's free flow of traffic? Now, you see... You cannot expect, and I think that is perhaps where we must do more advocacy. If you are driving from Shagamu towards Lagos and you are going at 100 kilometers per hour, you cannot expect that when you get to the construction zone, you'll be driving at the same speed. Mm -hmm. So people must understand that there will be some slowdown. And it is in that slowdown that how we behave becomes very, very important. And that is really what causes the lockdown. Impatience sometimes... Sometimes also vehicles just break down. Sometimes, uh, and, and so this is the responsibility of the Federal Road Safety uh, Corps who have uh, statutory responsibility for law enforcement. And uh, one of the things I've said publicly is that the time has come really to begin to enforce compliance with uh, road safety <coughs> laws, especially to ensure first that 
only properly certified drivers are on the road. A lot of people driving who yeah, shouldn't be driving. Good. So that's part of the gridlock and behavior and impatience and all of that. But this will go clearly in, in a matter of uh, a few months. So as a follow-up, sir, just um, to see if this could help, what, would it have helped if they were moving building materials at night, at hours where traffic was a bit slower? Or, you know, could they even have used um, lights to light up the area, work at odd hours to ease... All of this, all of this all. have been done at some point or the other. But if you understand construction, there are certain things you can't do at night in construction. So, yes, you can move the materials at night in some places. But there are some things you just can't do at night. There are some things that can be done at night. So, and we've, we've, we've tried all of these uh, options. And uh, each one has, none of it is free of its challenges. And we're doing the best we can in the circumstances. Even also, uh, you might not be aware of it, and I don't think uh, the public wants to know this. The public just wants to know when it's going to be done. So prices of construction materials have moved. So again, diesel, I think, used to be 160-something or 200, and it's moved. So the contractors are saying, look, we can't deliver this. So again, we have to start a process of revising the contract costs. So we've had a lot of laws that says you can't move contract price without going back to FERC, without going back to BPP, and this is a cue. So sometimes when you hear me complain about our procurement laws and how it has slowed down the development of the country, these are some of the things. But hey, the reason why we have this job is to get it done. Yes. Yeah. So still on the legacy, but on expressway. Um, we commend the work that's going on, but um, as we had already mentioned, there are some human interest issues that come up. And one of the things that have been major, especially around construction areas, is security. Because of the gridlock and, you know, people, some unscrupulous people will take advantage. And I would just like to know, now that the barriers have been put back in place, the um, traffic is back, what would we be doing what would your ministry be doing differently in collaboration with the other agencies to make sure that in 2023 um, passengers, commuters do not go through those security issues that we had last year? I like the in collaboration part because it clearly underlies your knowledge and appreciation of the fact that I'm not in charge of the, yeah. of the security. And um, there, there have been initiatives in the past and uh, uh, not only on this route but across other routes too and uh, we also are aware that sub-national governments, state governments are also mobilizing support and resources if you follow the conversation towards the end of Christmas, uh, Lagos, Ogu and Oyo uh, through the Amoteku and the related uh, law enforcement call mobilized there. One government I think it was said they were even deploying uh, some level of technology to monitor, provide surveillance. So all of this is work uh, yeah. being done to ensure that uh, uh, ultimate safety of all the commuters who use the road. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view questions if I want to ask questions and if it's something that I saw coming I may not even ask questions I may just you I may even tell you I saw this what if, what if it's in person mm -hmm. but then would it make a difference where so like this person might just say you people can't just be on third me language <laughs> on a bike <laughs> and the person say Babe, I cannot do it again. <laughs> and you lose range. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, what would oh change? What would change the scenario? For, like, does it matter where? Do you want to have like a fancy dinner, Wait, like the film you were mentioning? No, 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 like, finally, I'll be then, right. Or do you want to be on the street? No, carry me. Don't go fancy dinner. Or even I don't want just on a run for treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> or you're not a job. Don't tell you, you'll lose for your web. <laughs> No, don't tell me. I tempted more than. So, what, wh which would it be? Because I'm like, in person, you have the closure that you want and a few injuries. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> that, 
That's one place. It could be inside the car. You can sit inside the car. Why car? Why not bike? Who will be driving? Why bike? Who will be no, driving no, at this car point? will be stationary. Pray I'm not the, the one driving. <laughs> the just be pray. stationary. Because I'll go, I'll go mad at them. You can't be told me like me. I will <laughs> drive their water away. Only, only, only. You must consider. <laughs> Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Thanks for staying with us. We still have Honorable Minister Fashola with us. Um, congratulations on the second Niger Bridge. Um, it opened to the public. I mean, lots of Nigerians were really happy um, to be able to go home, you know, with ease. Um, our question is, we're, he we're hearing that not all parts of the road are opened, that they're still waiting for it. There's a final phase. And we're also asking, how many more of these big projects across the country are we expecting before the end of this administration? So, um... I think I'd like to start by asking us to ask ourselves, between 1999 and 2015, what did the government at the center promise Nigerians? Can you remember something? Whether it was seven-point agenda, they changed to five-point agenda, whether it was Vision 2010, they changed to Vision whatever. It was just a cacophony of unclarity. Mm. Now, ask yourself, between that, what did they promise? Because people now hold us to security, economy, and anti-corruption. And this says a lot about this government. It's clear definition of the problem before it came into office. So when people now say, oh, yes, they have done infrastructure, but the economy. The truth is that we didn't campaign on infrastructure. We campaigned on the economy. And there's no way you're going to build an economy without addressing the fundamentals of, his, of the infrastructure. Whether it's export or import business, it needs ports, it needs roads, it needs bridges, it needs seaports, it needs uh, uh, airports and so on. So this is the purpose of infrastructure. So when people talk about poverty, multidimensional and monetary policy, the second Niger Bridge and all the other infrastructure are examples of Clarity of choices and investments to address poverty, both the multidimensional and the monetary. So let me speak to that. The old bridge has had its capacity dwarfed. When it was built, this economy was not this big. The population was not this large. Businesses were not this many. And so that poverty will continue unless there is a new bridge. And... That bridge has been the subject of promises at the time when there were prolific oil revenues. But this president, this government have said, whatever it takes, including repatriating stolen money, we'll put it in that bridge. So opening it up in December was a way to verify whether the solution, which is the construction of the bridge, actually works. Because the choice was build another bridge. And even though there's three or four kilometers of connecting road, dual carriage connecting road. 
to the Asabayan. There is a construction road that we were using to move materials, and we thought, why not? The bridge is ready. Let people use it. And the relief and the impact was very, very well, 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 well received. Yes, and it just shows now it. we're going to close down. So that was the purpose, to make life better, mm -hmm. to reduce journey time. You shouldn't spend 18 hours crossing a two-kilometer river. Mm -hmm. That is the whole purpose of that bridge. And it, it clearly shows that President Buhari has the solution to that problem. Now, right. in terms of poverty, let us deal with the monetary poverty. For about seven years during the construction, over 4,000 people were directly employed on that bridge. So that deals with monetary poverty. I, I had said on this show, 19 million liters of diesel was used to construct that bridge. Mm. That diesel was not uh, supplied by Julius Berger. They are subcontractors. So that's how you see an economy. And you can't imagine the quantity of uh, reinforcement, iron, rod, uh, cement, and the supplementary business. Now, on the multidimensional side, so what used to take 18 hours to cross? Time loss, business inefficiency, it was now a few minutes. Mm -hmm. from, so you will see ease of doing business efficiency. So when people are talking about inflation, and I wonder whether we focus on cost push inflation mm -hmm. as a measure of how long mm -hmm. it takes to get things done. This is the answer, or this is part of the answer yeah. on infrastructure nationwide. Just as a follow-up. Um, some have criticized that you know this administration did not start the second Niger Bridge. At what state was it when you took over, if truly that's the situation? The abutment, which is where you want to start climbing the bridge, was being constructed. Just the abutment. So all the piling works were done by this government. And it really doesn't matter for me whether you say who started. We don't own it. Nigerians own it. Yeah, right. The truth is that Nigerians needed it. There was a period of about seven years where we were earning over $100 per barrel from oil. If it was such an important priority for you, why didn't you do it? Mm -hmm. So to now start bickering, oh, you didn't start it, you finish it, it's been done. And we own it, Nigerians. Yeah, Nigerians so own it. There's one other work that you have done that I must confess, I wasn't really aware of this until, you know, I read a report where you're saying we're Serious, we're, and we're talking about the second Niger Bridge, but there is one particular one we should also be celebrating. That's the local Oweto Bridge. So that's the bridge that crosses over the river Benue, yeah. and um, it links the north to the south. Please, sir, could you just elaborate on this for us? Okay, so when I took office in 2015, local Oweto was a project that was already awarded, but it wasn't funded, so no work was being done. <laughs> so I went there to see, and... Uh, <laughs> no bridge had been built. Mm -hmm. And uh, I then told the contractors to just start work and that we will find monies for them. So if you saw my last trip, you see signs of the Sukuk. Okay. So that's where the money largely came from, to mm -hmm. build that bridge. Okay. So when we are talking about borrowing and debt, uh, people forget that there was public debt of over $12 trillion when this government took office. But where was the infrastructure? So if you are talking about debt now, you are seeing a second Niger Bridge, you are seeing a local Weto Bridge, you are seeing Lagos, Ibadan Express, you are seeing four, five new airports, mm -hmm. you are seeing a seaport, you are seeing investment into a refinery to help private sector conclude and stop the importation of, of, of crude oil. That's part of what accounts for the debt. Mm -hmm. And this is the investment that is going to release Nigeria's economy long after Buhari is gone. Local Oweto is so defining. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of emotion. And because it was based on failed promises, mm -hmm. and one understands it about the second Niger Bridge. It was always a political tool. Yeah. And so I understand the emotion about it. But local Oweto is as big as no bigger than the second Niger mm -hmm. Bridge. Because if you're coming from uh, the east of Nigeria and you're coming to Abuja, through Benue and through Nasarawa, you will have to drive before this bridge into Lafia, even if you had no business in Lafia, before you get to Kefi. Mm -hmm. Now, what this bridge has done is to obviate the need to go into Lafia, and you will cross the bridge from Oshogwedo in uh, Benue, land in Loko, and drive straight to Kefi. That would have cut off four hours from your journey time. Mm -hmm. So if you are talking economics and you are a transporter, 
and you gain four hours saving. Clearly, you will see it over the years yeah. later in the cost <laughs> of goods and services. Mm -hmm. Let me go on Twitter quickly. So our tweets are coming in, and everybody on this side of the Lagos Abegota Express, we are tweeting and asking the minister why the Lagos Abegota Expressway was abandoned as compared to the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. What exactly was the priorities like when you decided the state of which it is now? Most tweets are referring to both state governors on both ends, saying it's a federal road, and so they are absorbing themselves of not um, investing anything. Okay, so let me start first by saying that I hear the concerns about Lagos, Abelkuta, and there are people that we should have asked since 1999 why Lagos or Abelkuta was not built. But that's uh, looking back, we're looking forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say categorically on this seat that all the roads that lead into and out of Lagos as a strategic commercial capital of Nigeria are receiving one form of attention or the other. And before I come to Lagos or Tabe Kuta, let me tell you about Ikurudu to Shagamu. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about Lagos to Badagri. Let me tell you, and we have spoken about Lagos Ibadan. So Lagos to Tabe Kuta is the last one. Mm. Uh, again, the contractor had abandoned site when we came and we revived it. And uh, we're putting the sukuk into it. And I think this last sukuk, there was about $7 billion in it. So we don't have all of the money to build it. Now, I understand that there is much pain on the Ogun side. But on the Lagos side, work is going on. So the contractor is constructing from Lagos towards Ogun. And it is the Ogun side where you will see all the potholes and the pain. Because the contractor hasn't reached there. Yeah. Uh, in a matter of weeks, I am hopeful touch wood that we will have a more enduring financing solution, mm -hmm. not only to Lagos uh, or Tabekuta, but also to Akure and Adwekiti. In a matter of weeks, we, will, we should have a financing solution. And once that is done, whether we are there in government or not, mm -hmm. those roads will be constructed. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is what I am working on now. Could you explain to Nigerians why we would need to tow the Lagos Ibadan Road, mm. the second Niger Bridge. As you know, Nigerians, we don't like to hear that we have to be paying extra for plying okay. our road. After all, it's our own. <laughs> so why, why do we need to do this? Well, I think that, first of all, is to understand that out of about 200,000 plus kilometers, the total uh, uh, quantity of roads that will be under... Uh, the tolling policy approved by government is barely 5% of that. So it's not, it's not such a large volume of roads that will be tolled. But Lagos or uh, <coughs> Ibadan, for example, was built as a toll road in any event from day one. And uh, when we also want to sustain quality of service, maintenance, and all of that, uh, I think it is only sensible that those type of roads that have high volumes of traffic can be subject to those kind of uh, commercial policies in order not just to raise revenues to maintain the roads, but tolling and its uh, concomitant services are also part of economic uh, expansion and creation. Mm. Tolling itself globally is a business. So it's not my children or the president's children who will be managing or operating the toll stations, but that's new employment. We have to continue to open up all of the possible vistas of, 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 of economic opportunities in this country. We can't just stay with agri, oil, te, mm. uh, tech, and all of that. Mm. We haven't opened up the economy of sports, for example. Mm. And so there's so much. We really have no business with the challenges we're facing. Mm. But one after the other, once you build the foundation, which is infrastructure, you can't have sports also without journeys to stadium, to mm. theaters, and all of right. that. So the fundamentals are <coughs> what this government is putting in okay. place. Okay. And I challenge any of our opponents to provide an alternative solution. I haven't heard it. Hi, How can you run an economy without infrastructure? Whether you want to import, whether you want to expand, whether you want to produce, You've whatever always, you want to do. I've always had complaints about, um, from the government especially, that people steal materials from sites. Um, mm. How, where people have been unpatriotic in many ways. Um, what are, from burning, I hear that some, some people burn some of these things under, under the bridges. What have you done to mitigate this going forward? Well, we, they, they, they manifest themselves in many ways. In terms of stealing, for example, we have gone back to research and development. 
we've seen that some of the aluminium uh, rails have commercial secondary value, so we've taken them out. You see that most of the rails on bridges now are concrete. Okay. Uh, we've seen, for example, that wrought iron, which is used uh, to build uh, grids and uh, manholes, have commercial secondary value. It's just a mentality that we must get rid of. <laughs> but while it is there, we're providing either using concrete and just welding it up, uh, 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 plastering it or sealing it up to ensure that citizens, commuters, road users don't then get uh, injuries as a result of accidents that happen. But long-term solution is a total education and mindset change starting from the primary school that look these assets really are not worth the effort. Yes. You are, you are. So, so talking about durability again, based on just the example that you gave, um, the Eco Bridge Akongo End example, how durable are these new bridges? And to avoid this kind of a human factor damages that we suffered there, what are you doing to secure so that there are no activities of um, human existence under the bridges so that we, we don't fall back on these kind of things? And then one, when, when is a power bridge likely to be reopened? Okay, this is a multi-way question. Okay, this is a multi-way uh, uh, solution. Mm. So we can point our fingers at <coughs> the people who turned the under a bridge into a market, right? <laughs> and where they were cooking, they were selling. Also, but look, what were they selling around a Alcoholic beverage. They are not cheap. So it was the rich and the elite of this country who chose to shop there. From under the bridge. They buy it from the malls, so, so, the supermarket. So, no, no, we'll go there. I know. <laughs> so that's my neighborhood too. Okay. Ulogo, Ofe, and all of that. That's my neighborhood. So, again, we can point fingers at those people, yes, but some of the fingers should be pointing at ourselves too. Mm. Because by patronizing those markets, we have lost a major transport asset. Everybody is now suffering. Uh, seriously. And in terms of uh, when it will be ready, uh, we were hopeful that we could finish it before Christmas, before. Yeah. But most of the equipment that we imported or fabricated locally to restore the safety of the pillars suddenly had to be diverted to the Jora fire. Mm. Mm. When that happened, you right. see how all those steel frames mm -hmm. were made. So we had to quickly, because that became a bigger emergency. Okay. Mm. In the Jora fire. Right. And so we have to re-import, refabricate. So mm. we're looking at sometime uh, in May this year. Yeah. Right. Hopefully that Let will me move to finish. housing, because we have very little time. There's so much we need to talk on yes, to you. Uh, many people have said that you focus a bit on infrastructure and roads, that they've not seen much in housing. Others have said that you've built houses in places where nobody can live, you know, in the outskirts of okay. cities, people very far away from the cities. Um, and I know the last time we spoke some time ago, you had said that they were putting together some kind of a mortgage plan. Could you give us an, an update on housing in Nigeria, where we are, and how far do you think we would have gone by the time your administration ends in May? All right, um, we have a Department of Public Building and Housing Development. So they're in charge of public buildings. So they're not just in charge of houses, all other public buildings. So let me start from the general public buildings. This year, President Buhari will be inaugurating and handing over four new federal secretariats. They're massive projects in Oka in Anambra, in Lafia, in Nasarawa, in Bayelsa, in Yenegua, in Bayelsa, and in Guso, in Zamfara State. We will also be handing over the Zuba housing estate in Abuja, mm -hmm. 78 blocks, 748 housing units in there. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just uh, one part. In the last 12 months, he has asked his ministers to go to their states to hand over the national housing program uh, projects which have been completed. Some are in phase one, some are in phase three, depending on the land that we get from the states. And this has happened in many states. It was from those houses, for example, that the Super Eagles uh, uh, pledge and promise made 28 years ago mm. to redeem, give them houses, that this president has redeemed that pledge. 
He has redeemed that of uh, West Half and uh, who are the other coaches. Uh, so this is going on in 35 states and the ministers in each state are going to hand over and commission. People are already buying using our online portal. But that is only part of the story. We have a 6,000 or 7,000 housing unit program across Nigeria completed through one of our subsidiaries, the Federal Mortgage Bank, one of our parastatals, sorry, the Federal Mortgage Bank. Mm -hmm. The Federal Housing Authority is also <clears throat> building in sites and service and buildings in different parts of the country. So, and if people care to go to our website, you will see the details of all of this. So we are lifting as much as we can in housing, as we are lifting in, in, in the roads and transport sector. Mm -hmm. But bear in mind also, at the end of the day, whether it's an office, whether it's your house, it's a destination. And you need the transport infrastructure to get there. Mm -hmm. but I'll just... Okay. Can I ask, just... Um, um, it was already yeah. asked, but you did not um, talk about it. Right. And it's how Nigerians feel about some things when it's done. Like, I personally, to hear that, oh, you're building houses in places that we cannot reach, sounds funny to me, but can the government tell Nigerians why that was an option, why that's the option? So, i like to know specifically where is this place that Lagos. people cannot reach. Where? where we cannot it? get our own in Lagos. No, no, because... so. Let's understand first how this national housing program started. Uh, the terms of engagement were clear. I have letters I wrote to the governors when we started, uh, which was that give us five hectares of land and no more than 10 hectares. Mm -hmm. Give us those, those sizes of land where there is an access route or where you plan to build an access route. Our government is not responsible for building local roads. We are responsible for building interstate roads. Mm -hmm. okay. So we will build the federal road that comes into that state. And this was the basis of that partnership. Mm. Now, the fact that there is no, no, no access, uh, road. access road there in a third road does not mean that there won't be. Mm -hmm. Does not mean that there won't be. And if we don't continue to open out, build up, we always remember that we are supposedly about 200 million people. But I don't know if we are paying attention to the fact that no. we are dancing up and yes, we need to open up. Mm. Yeah. And, and so, again, otherwise life will become difficult and intolerable to live. Mm -hmm. And we have land that we have used. So I'm hearing you say that it's the government of the state that should open up those rules so that we can access the places the Wherever land that given to kind you of problem to exists. Yeah. Right. We have built the estate rule. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now build the inter. Okay. Okay, well, you mentioned me. just um, earlier about um, you know um, building of refineries, building of um, um, an extra port terminal. I think just now when you were talking about other Airports, projects yeah. under the ministry, as roads, they're are, not under my ministry. They are the government government. Under the government. Okay, yeah. please kindly elaborate on. So, this. so what I was saying was that look, this this economic message and plan of our party, our government, led by the president is hinged first on building the infrastructure that makes the economy work. Mm -hmm. If you are an importer or an exporter and the port is not efficient, you are poor. So that speaks to the new Lekki Seaport, mm. where again government is giving support. If we are importing petroleum products, that is putting at least, as at the last check, a 30% demand on our need for foreign exchange which we are not earning enough of. Mm -hmm. So government has said, okay, Dangote Group, what can we do? It says, I need some investment support. Government has put some equity to close that, close, close out that project so that we start producing petrol, uh, our petrol locally. Mm -hmm. So if this happens, one of the things you will see is an appreciation in the price of the Naira to the dollar because demand has reduced mm -hmm. by a component of close to 30%. Mm -hmm. So, and... If you look at the Apapa Wurushoki Expressway, mm -hmm. that leads to the biggest seaport and the busiest in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So that road had broken down in 2015 when we came. So how can you import? How can you produce? How can you export? Mm. So the last, the last missing pit is the electricity. And it's a work in progress. Mm. Let me go on a quick break.
In fact, you just electricity. Got yep, a few yep. things that want to happen. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, and Ikula Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power! Ginger, today, today we'll go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Huh. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions, I'm here to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah. Wait, wait till your age. I was close now. Eh? I said 1975. He said 73. He said, said 75. But that's why I wasn't even born till 75. Damn. So will I drink out? Eh? You can drink out. <laughs> take, 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 make a, make a help you. Russian, Russian, Russian. No be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Light in in no. Nepa, Nepa Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepa oh. Road. Nepa Road. In a Ah <laughs> uh -uh. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah hey omi omo fella omi omo anikula kpokuti. It's by all this one, it's not by all this one. Thanks for staying with us. Um, sir, let me talk about the Lekki Seaport you talked about earlier, the access road, because Nigerians, Lagosians especially, are concerned that when the project finally kicks off, it's going to become your area, uh, Lagos, uh, Badagri. There's going to be problems. Now, we are, we are confused. Is it the responsibility of the state government to build that road? Because we know there's expansion going on already on that road. And we're saying, if it's Lagos State, what are you doing to support? Because people believe that there's more has to be done so that we don't have what we're having in Lagos, Badagri, at the, at the Lekki Expressway when the seaport finally kicks off. Well, you see what we already see, but we need to do things in a process. So, just last week, uh, and over the Christmas break, these are conversations uh, my team and I were having, and also with other residents of the state. But I assure you, there are multiple options on the table uh, in order not just to expand the road network, but also to look at um, additional ways of trucking uh, uh, goods and uh, cargo from that port, either badges or even hopefully if we choose and can finance it, uh, a rail 
service to link to their Papa uh, rail service because that one, the Lagos Ibadan, was going into their Papa port. So we're already thinking about it, thinking about it, choosing what is most efficient, uh, costing it, and then implementing it uh, stages of, of uh, national development. So we just left a lot of things undone, and they are coalescing now at a time when our economy is just about to, to really unleash itself. Okay, sir. Um, you know, Nigerians, how we talk, we we'll say, oh, this present administration, they only think about a particular region of the country to, you know, develop. Could you give us a picture, a big picture, a large picture of how projects are spread across Nigeria? Mm -hmm. And if you think it's equitable or if just a certain region is getting preferential treatment? Well, what you, what you allude to now about... Uh, uh, complaints about, oh, there's no this, there's no that. I haven't heard that uh, uh, narrative uh, since I took office as Minister uh, of Works and Housing. Because if you look at what we've covered, out of 36 states and the FCT, we're building in 35 mm -hmm. and the FCT. And the only state we are not building is my own state. And it's simply because the government has now given us land but the land has to be sand filled. If we sand fill it, it becomes very expensive to deliver. Mm. So governor says he's looking for another parcel of land. Oh, so all states essentially have been covered. If you look at the infrastructure, whether it is from Abuja to Kanu, whether it is from Kanu to Maiduguri, whether it is South South, Portakot, Bodo Boni, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is uh, Loko Weto, whether it is uh, Kalabai to Dukbani, Ogoja, Ecom, every, we're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And whether it is uh, to the northwest, uh, you will see us there. We're everywhere. <laughs> and I've been to the 36 states. I've taught the 36 states by road twice. And now I'm making spot visits just to go and see where we are completing. Right. You didn't talk about the Nigeria Cameroon border bridge, the 1.5 kilometer border bridge. Okay, so again, that was a project that was supposed to have been executed after the session of the Bakasi Peninsula to Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And part of, I believe, the Green Trees Agreement, that's what it's called, if I remember, was that, look, you must continue to promote uh, international uh, harmony and uh, allow people to be able to move. There's an old bridge there. So this is a new bridge funded by the African Development Bank Oh. We uh, executed the contract, uh, I think we awarded in 2017 or 2018, it's finished. But it's not just now about Nigeria and Cameroon, this is linking West Africa, Africa. to North Central Africa and uh, to Central Africa. And also because we have now signed the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Mm. So this is also part of that economy. Mm that we are talking about. If you go to Aba, Aba is a major shopping destination for people from the Cameroon Republic mm -hmm. and the Central African Republic. So just like Dubai is a major shopping center for certain types mm -hmm. of Nigerians, our own Aba here is a major place where they come and import mm -hmm. and buy goods. So this road makes that link even more efficient yeah. now because it takes you from Cross River into Inugu to Abakliki. Okay. That's the link. That's yes, beautiful. Can I, uh, yeah, let's let's let me, yes, a okay. question here. So, Emmanuel Litodo says, can the Honorable Minister comfortably assert that his ministry has done well in road infrastructure in Nigeria? What criteria does the ministry use in selecting roads? And why is Makodi Otupo Enugu Road in complete shambles? Makodi Otrupo, I believe we have a contractor there. There are funding challenges. And in reference to his question, um, I can say so that we have done a lot. Uh, we have done well. Even if I say so, I'm my own strongest critic, we have moved the needle significantly far better mm -hmm. than what we met. We met a budget of 18 billion for Nigeria's roads. In mm. 2015, what was yes. that going to I do? Remember you said that. And at that time, oil prices were 97, 97 dollars per barrel, 95 dollars per barrel. So we've done significantly better with the leadership and the support, not only of the president but also my colleagues in cabinet and members of parliament too. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I was part of the journalist team that taught the um, uh, uh, Papa Woroshoki Express Road construction, and I was shocked to see how complete it was that you know, it was about 90% complete at the time we taught. And the issues of a papa did not disappear because the roads are now properly done. The issues still persist. What exactly would you say is the cause of a papa's problem? It's now a matter of law enforcement. I was there, I think, on the 29th of December. I think I went there, either 27th or 29th. I don't quite remember. And we toured the road from Togate to uh, the port. And essentially, the Dangote group, which is the PPP model we use under the uh, Executive Order 7, the tax credit uh, policy, has almost finished the road. What they're doing now uh, is installation of the street lights and, and the furniture, and also Section 2A between uh, Snake Island and uh, Berger, which we did not want to do initially because uh, it was in very good condition at the time. But what has taken over is motorcycles, markets, people trading under umbrellas right in the middle of a road, mm -hmm. people taking over the setback, people changing engine, running mechanic workshop. So all of that must go. And it must be a federal government, state government, and local government collaboration mm -hmm. to get rid of all, all of that. This is just a failure of law and order mm -hmm. and that allows people to do that. And there are laws which make these things uh, criminal or punishable, whether by fine or by some, some other mm. sentence. So this is a is change of human behavior, essentially. It's a question I've been always meaning to ask you for many years, um, and it's just out of curiosity. When I drive around Lagos, I see a lot of abandoned federal buildings. These are buildings that used to be there during the military regime, and they're there occupying space. And I'm thinking to myself, can't some of these be pulled down for housing? Mm -hmm. Can't they be pulled down for um, no convert, uh, converting to commercial hubs? I mean, what are you doing and what kind of relationship do you have with the government of Lagos State to see how we can use some of these? They're just there, standing there, like ISOs. Okay, so some of those buildings are offices, or office buildings. Some of them are also uh, residential buildings. So one of the things we have done in the last six years is to assist government to even develop an inventory of what she owns. Okay. So we're, that's a work in progress. But it's also to point out that the previous government had sold most of these assets. Okay. And so they are no long, many of them are, that you see are no longer government buildings. Oh. Those who bought them are now the ones who are okay. perhaps struggling with what to do with okay. them. Okay. Uh, what has not been sold has been managed by the Presidential Implementation Committee domiciled in the presidency. Okay? So, I hear you and what you speak to really is an urban planning and urban development issue. Yeah. I have no jurisdiction yeah. over that. The Supreme Court has decided that urban planning and development is a state matter. Mm. But we will be have ready... Have been approached by the states we, concerning some of these things? Not, no. Okay. Not that I can recall off, off my head. Well, let me take the call. I think I have a caller. Good morning. Are you there? Okay, I lost that call. Let's take a few comments on social media and wrap mm -hmm. up on this. Oh. Yeah. Yes, so many. So, um, or more federal says, Mr. BRF, please, sir, can, you, uh, can I respond? Mr. BRF, can you please share with us the website of your ministry so that Nigerians can access it? Google it. Google, Google it, please. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's the website for the housing? And then, is there any housing Google project it. in River State? Let's start with housing. Let me start. Let me have, have River State housing. They're asking mm -hmm. about that. There, there is a housing project in River State. Would you speak to the mortgage? Because I know there was a time you were talking about <coughs> the mortgage where you pay in installments. Is that okay. still ongoing or that's been cancelled? No. Um, there is a federal mortgage bank. So let's not forget that. And the whole idea of mortgage uh, universally is to allow you to pay on a on an instrumental basis. So that is still there. What we have done that has changed uh, from what used to be 
is that the threshold for uh, qualification, we have lowered them. Traditionally, if you want to take a mortgage, you have to part finance by equity. So if you were taking, for example, uh, 5 million and below, those were the old thresholds, mm. you needed to put up 10%. Some people just couldn't find 500,000 naira. Mm. So as a matter of policy, we said, take it out. Okay. If the person qualifies on all that parameters, remove the equity contribution so that that person can get the mortgage. And that has opened access to many other people who are at that threshold <laughs> of engagement. Um, if you needed to take 5 million up to, I think, 15 or 20 million, the equity contribution used to be 15%. Mm. And that's a larger volume. We have said, okay, take out 5% out of that. Reduce the entry qualification mm. because those are bigger players and they should be able to have, they are not as vulnerable as the mm -hmm. 5 mm -hmm. to 0. Let me take this call from Yakub. Good morning, Yakub. Are you there? Yeah, I'm Sorry for good keeping morning. you. Go ahead, uh, good morning to Honorable Minister. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, your ministry has done a very wonderful job in this country. And start to be corrected. I, I've never seen a, a minister that uh, works the way you do. But, sir, we do respect. Uh, there's a road that's put down to us there, especially the road from uh, Abuleza, immediately after the bridge of Abuleza, especially from Amadia down to Sogate and down to Stilga after Congo Bridge. Yes, coming from other people to Lagos, it has been done. Well, okay. Anybody come from me for between 30 minutes to get to Lagos. But from Lagos down to E4, it is, it is so, so bad. And then they would do a little job. And then before you know, they will, we will see them there. What is the really problem going on in that road? Mm. This Thank you, Yakub. Yes. The real problem, as I said earlier, if you were listening, is the funding problem. So the contractor wants to construct the road, which is his main contract. So those little jobs that you say they do are relief jobs, mm. just to make it easy for commuters. But those parts have not been reconstructed. They are palliatives, if you like. Okay. Because that road has failed completely, it had to be redesigned and reconstructed. So when you see those relief, Please do not mistake them for the job having been done. Mm. They are relief. They will wash away because the fundamentals of reconstruction have not taken place there. And that is why you can see, as you rightly said, there is completed works on one part. It is yet to be completed on another part. And this work construction is done on an incremental basis anyway. So, and we will get there. And as I said earlier before you called in, uh, we are looking at some other funding plans that I hope will come into hand uh, soon enough. And once we conclude that, as I said, whether we are still in office, uh, whether I'm still in office or not, if we put that funding plans, plan in place, whoever takes my job should be able to okay. finish. Okay, so there's a lot <coughs> of I have to go on a break, unfortunately. Let me go on a break. When we come back, move on to politics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. ask questions if I want to ask questions. And if it's something that I saw coming, I may not even ask questions. I mean, just you. I may even tell you I saw this. What, if, what if it's in person? Mm -hmm. But then, would it make a difference where? So, like, this person might just say, you put, can just be on third mill language. <laughs> <laughs> on a bike. <laughs> and the person say, 
Babe, I cannot do it again. <laughs> and you lose rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would oh change? God. What would change the scenario? For, like, does it matter where? Do you want to have like a fancy dinner, hey, like the film you were mentioning? No, 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 like about? Or, and be then, right. or do you want to be on the street? No, carry me. No, 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 Or even I just on a run for treadmill. Or on a job. You don't tell you, you don't lose for your web. No, don't turn oh, yeah. attempted mother. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Wh which would it be? Because I'm like, in person, you have the closure that you want, and a few injuries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's one place. It could be inside the car. You can sit inside the car. Why car? Why not bike? Who will be driving? Why bike? Who will be no, driving no, at the this car? Point? Will be stationary. <laughs> pray, I'm not the one be. driving. <laughs> they just be pray. stationary. Because I'll go, I'll go mad at them. You can't be told me like me. I'm gonna drive there water away. Right? <laughs> all all of, all you must be confident. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I will drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. <laughs> She, you didn't want me, me. You want me, no. I think I'll drink. Huh? <laughs> no problem. Okay. <laughs> I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never knew it. Bothered. Thanks for staying with us. We we'll still have with us Minister Fashala. This last lap of this conversation, we want to. We're talking to you now as Lagosians, mm -hmm. as our former governor. We're not mm -hmm. discussing to you. We're not discussing to you with you. Just as regular people, but we're allegations telling you, asking you to tell us the truth and speak to us as your constituents. You're a former governor of this state. You led this state. And many have alluded your success to your, um, the forebear, as you are, who was before you. And many have also said that he started the projects and many of the, the concepts, the ideas and the blueprints, an idea of what Lagos should be, which you worked on, and even what Vajide Samuel is working on now. But many still feel that Ashwaju shouldn't be running for president today. In your view, because they feel, what's he has already led Lagos, and we've seen the success <coughs> of Lagos, why is he running for president? He needs to say that he's a he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a party leader. He's, he's, he's a party leader, he should remain a, a, a job at day, a, a job a a, a day. Day. <laughs> not a leader. What are your thoughts? Do you think Ashwaju indeed has the capacity to lead this country? Without a doubt in my mind, <clears throat> I've worked with him and I was his chief of staff for four and a half years. So I worked with him uh, on a minimum basis of about 14 hours a day. So I saw him at close quarters. Mm. Um, you underestimate him. His resilience and you underestimate his intelligence at your own peril. Hmm. And go and read the tribute I wrote when he turned 60. So, yes, but he's a much older man. And one side of the question is okay because he's older. The other side is that what is on offer on the other side? Hmm. Is there not something inherently <clears throat> or altruistically patriotic about this movement that in spite of this, I want to do this for my country. And what does he want to do for his country? You know, when people talk about what he did in Lagos, and I think you localize it when you even focus it on Lagos, but let us remember that the first state bond for infrastructure and development in this country was raised during his term as governor. And it was raised in spite of a federal PDP opposition mm. saying that it couldn't be done. But that is the model, that is the pathway that all states now follow to raise funding. So there was a funding problem. Mm. We still have a funding problem, a revenue problem. IGR expansion, his model is the model that all the states 
have now followed. So why are you hiding behind a finger? Mm. So, Nigeria has similar problems. We need to expand our revenue base. And so this is what is offering. When people were struggling with access to justice, Office of the Public Defender was created here. The last time I checked, 10 other states, including opposition, have created their own version of the Office of Public Defender. So even those who oppose him adopt his policies. The Lagos State Advertising and Signage Agency, LASA, was not just to reform and strengthen and reposition advertising business. It was to increase local government revenues who have the constitutional responsibility for outdoor signage and advertising. Mm -hmm. The last time I checked, if you check, 15 states in Nigeria have passed their own version of LASA. Mm -hmm. And 16 states have passed their own version of LASMA. All of his policies have gained resonance nationwide, even by his most virulent critics. And he's saying, now, I want to do this on a national scale. And you're asking me whether I should run. I will vote for him. And I'm campaigning for him. And let the opponents come and show us what they have done. Because we are now saying from local to national. What have you done? And you know the interesting thing? <clears throat> All of them held public office. All of them. At least the front runners. Mm -hmm. are there. So what have you done that has had national appeal, national acceptance, and national sustainability as to qualify you for this job. So it's not about how old the man is. Even his older, older version, version is better than any of their younger versions as I speak today. Because I've seen all of them at work. And I've taken time to objectively analyze what they have done. So you would hear that one of the candidates says, oh, yes, I'm going to privatize. We did privatization. Privatization of what? The privatization process started during Ibrahim Babangida, 1986. That was when the law was passed. And then you say you privatize, and that's why we have a telephone. Lie. What was privatized was Nitel. I don't know how many Nigerians use a Nitel line. Hmm. No, no, no. Hmm. The lines we use today are licenses that were sold. And there's a very fine distinction between privatizing an asset and selling a license under a law that you did not enact. Okay, let's pay a quick question. Let's okay, let's on. just quickly follow up since, you know, um, just on Monday, the 2nd of January, the governor of Lagos State was on set here. And we had asked whether he, what he felt about Ashwajo's candidacy also. He talked laudably about it. And... I would like to know, since he is also running, you've governed the state where he's governing now. What do you think about his performance so far? And would you also vote for him? Not because he's from the party that you belong to anyway. <laughs> but what do you, you think? See, again, it's always what is on the other side. Mm -hmm. And this morning, I would vote for him without a doubt. I'm going to campaign for him. I'm coming back home to campaign uh, because I love this period. So, because I can go to the electorate with our results. Mm. That's the kind of politics that I love. Uh, but for me, uh, leave all of the heavy lifting, all the infrastructure and all of it. Just imagine, just imagine uh, what life would have been if Governor Sonwulu was not in charge when the COVID virus broke out. Just imagine. Those first incident cases, if they had disappeared into Nigeria. <laughs> and it's almost similar to what happened during yeah. Ebola. Yes. So, all of the hardware that we're talking about, he's finishing the rail, he's completed housing. Yes, but it is only for the living. How many, many more people? If that is one reason, healthcare. And ensuring that we all stay alive maximally as much as possible, he deserves my vote and as many of the 7 million uh, registered voters in Lagos. What's your relationship yeah. with him? Because I'd asked him, what's your relationship with him? Oh. He calls me Egbo. 
And we have a good relationship. We still spoke, uh, I think, on the third of the third day of the year. Right. He was heading for Abuja, and I was hoping I could catch him in okay. Abuja. We were in regular contact. Okay. So, sir, so uh, just just to say that, of course, there there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. But I won't I won't I won't discuss room for improvement by writing letters to him. I have a direct channel. <laughs> to call, <laughs> to call, call, him. call him. So nobody talks about. Lagos State without your name dropping in one way or the other. Uh, he, yes, where he did this, where he did that. <laughs> Even right now, you know, everyone is still commending your work that you did in Lagos State. And they would like to know if and when APC goes on to the next um, administration, would you be participating in any way? As a, minister, a public um, office, uh, as a minister, you would you, or are you going home? <laughs> but they don't want you to go home. They're saying, I, will I you have, come back? I have... I, I have been extremely privileged uh, uh, by this country so whether it's in terms of the education I received here or the opportunities to serve at the highest levels and at the time I did I became chief of staff to this state at 39 so uh, became her governor at 44 and um, I've run that race for 21 years now I sincerely need a break but that said uh, whatever is left of my life is to continue to serve. to serve and it will be in different positions under consultation mm. maybe not necessarily a 9 to 5 job anymore mm. I want you to talk to something really I need, I need to catch my breath <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to talk to something really important because a lot of, as the campaigns are ongoing people are using religion as a tool you're married to a Christian or you're a Muslim and I'd like you to share your thoughts on how all the organizations that should know better are using this oh our people let's vote our own let's vote your own you know and they're and they're making it a religious vote not an objective vote on issues what has been done what can be done and who has the ability to do it what are your thoughts on this and how can do you think we can dissuade from using religion as a political tool in this season i think the best way to dissuade it is to defeat the those who reach out to those arguments uh, i remember when we wanted to raise sukuk funding and people whether in ignorance or mischief or a combination of both said oh they were going to use it to islamize nigeria mm -hmm. but that sukuk funding is part of what is funding lagos otabe kuta road i'm sure yakub does not care where the money comes from he wants it done mm -hmm. uh, that money has helped to complete local Weto road it is funding 77 roads, 75, sorry, across Nigeria. And what we did was, the first Sukuk was raised during uh, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun's time as finance minister, and it was 100 billion. And she said, oh, BRF, I have this problem. They say that some people are opposed to it. I say, just give me the money. And we divided it into six, six zones, 16.6 .6 million per zone. I said, let's call a press conference. I ask any zone that does not want to cook money to come out and say they don't want. Mm -hmm. Nobody answered. Mm -hmm. So who wants, who does not want a Sukuk built road now? Uh. They are now asking for more. So it's a very base argument. It doesn't address the fundamentals of what we need to do. So when you get to hospital, do you ask for Christian blood when you are dying? Mm -hmm. Or do you ask for a Muslim that? surgeon when you need emergency care? Mm -hmm. Or when the pangs of Childbirth holds you. Do you say it must be somebody of your own faith who, in, who must be your midwife? And as you said, these things have no resonance in my own home. My father was Muslim. My mother is Anglican. I grew up in the Anglican church, in St. Jude's Church, in Butemeta. Before, I just said as an adult, okay, mommy, I'm leaving you. I'm going to worship like my father. Well, how you worship? And all of that really doesn't find the important thing. Do you serve God? Mm. So my wife is a dame of the Catholic Church, a title holder in that church. So is her mother. And we haven't had a religious conversation in our house. She fasts with me during Ramadan, cooks for all of the people, wakes up to cook for me. I join her sometimes in Lent. I'm a bad faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah. hey, in our homes, Christmas, New Year, Salah, Ramadan, okay. Eid, everybody is together. I have nine, eight siblings. Mm. There are Christians among them. 
the Muslims among them, but we won't be happy family. Right. Those issues don't come up, and they don't come up in the Nigerian space unless really? by those who want to manipulate mm. us, mm. who have an interest to serve. Let us teach ourselves and our children to walk away from them. Okay, <laughs> sir. So, yeah. Mohammed Ibrahim would be happy you answered it, uh, that question because he had asked something in that line as well. But Lawrence in Adewale is asking, so he's taking us back to roots. He says, Honorable Minister, sir, Ugeli to Potakot has been under construction for only God knows. Then Kalabat or Goja was constructed by RCC in 1983. Now it is a death trap. Abuja, Kaduna, Zaria, Kano Road, Used to be four hours to Kano. Now you can try it in eight hours. You would like to hear. Okay, so if you travel Abuja to Kano over the Christmas, you will see that uh, Kano to Zaria, 137 kilometers almost done. There was no barrier on it during Christmas. The feedback I got was very, very positive. Uh, Zaria to Kaduna, about 70 odd kilometers, is about a 30 minute drive now. Mm -hmm. So where work remains is the Abuja to Kaduna end of it. And uh, if you have any disagreements with that, you go and go and see what's going on. It's work in progress. Um, on the Ogoja Kalabar. road, Kalabar road, if you say a road was constructed in 1983, uh, that would be about 40 years ago yes. to, mm -hmm. the, to the day. Mm -hmm. So roads have design lives of between 20 and 30 years. Okay. So clearly, it's outlived its design life. Mm -hmm. And that's why you will see that we have Sematech, we have Julius Berger, and I don't remember quite the name of the third contractor, working between Kalaba to Udukwani, all the way to um, Alesi, Ugep, and, and that area. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, after one, one, half three minutes, one hand again. Half, half three minutes. Let me let my Okay, there's just okay. one last question. Um, Kwan Balogo says, We would like a lot of people are tweeting about your, your form of leadership, but he is also um, advancing. He says, We would like to have a mentorship fel uh, fellowship program. There's a lot to learn from him by extension, the next generation of leaders. So, do you have a mentorship um, society uh, or body, whatever? How are you it's, a very, it's a very important point you make. And uh, yes, uh, many of the young people who worked with me have also blossomed and I'm enthused to see what they're doing in their careers in different ways, medicine, health, sports, talent management, law, uh, broadcasting, there's so many of them. And, uh, and that is something possibly to fall back into on a um, sustained scale. But I, I just wanted to take the point that I wish that we, we acknowledge that between 1999 and now, we've had like 1999, 2003, 2007, 2011, 2015, at least five streams or thereabouts. Leaders. Governors, senators, House of Rep members, those are our resource persons now. Those are the people who should be coming on all these shows mm. to come and share practical experience mm. as against those who are dealing in the theories mm. and to come and tell you how real and possible or impossible some of the theories that I hear bandied on TV and on radio are as from his reality. And there are also people that the universities today can begin to recruit mm as visiting lecturers yeah. to come and share with students what the theory and the practical look like. As I tell people when they teach you engineering when I was in power, they don't teach you that people are going to go and cut your transformer in the bush. Yeah. And when they are teaching you banking and finance in class, they, are not, they don't teach you that they're going to be round tripping. Mm -hmm. It's when you get into real life that you, get, you come and deal with it. And those are that's a wrap up. That we I know we have just a minute left. Any final words you want to say to Nigerians there? Uh, obviously, Nima, I might ask if you're going to, if you accept a new position in the future. Any final, final word is that final uh, words we must all turn out to keep the APC government uh, in office. How do you they, convince the youth they, for that? They understand, the youth understand, they've been listening to me, they understand <laughs> what we have been doing, and they must understand that we cannot have the economy that we want without continuing the kind of investments that we have made. They understand that the challenges are many, 
But clearly, clearly, we, we are better to be entrusted with these challenges than those who have managed it before. And those who have not demonstrated any proven capacity should not come near this enterprise. All right, that's all we can take. Thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure having you on the show. A pleasure. Hopefully, we'll mind. bring you back again before the elections. <laughs> I'll be glad to come if you invite me. <laughs> yeah, always invited. We've been speaking with the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Honorable Mr. Baba Jide Raji Fashola. Baba Tunde. 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 Thank you so much for joining us. That's all we can take on today's show. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.